In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to import video into Flash. Now, in the past, with older versions of Flash, and if I remember correctly, it's Flash 8 or earlier, you can just go File, Import, like you normally would, and just go and import your video, and it will work fine. Now, the purpose of this tutorial is to show you how to import video in Flash with newer versions of Flash and I'm using Flash CS5 for this tutorial. Okay, so I want to import a .mov video. Now, if I try and do it the traditional way, file, import, and I want to, I want to import this video here, which is a, the giraffe attack cartoon I made a while ago. So I'm going to open, and it gives you a bunch of options. Now the default option is load external video with playback component. What this essentially does is it gives you a reference file to put in your timeline. So when you export your shockwave file, it's actually reading back your original video on your hard drive. So it's fine for local playback. But if you want to then submit your shockwave file to the internet, it will just be blank because it's trying to read your file but it's not on your local machine anymore so it won't be able to find it so it won't work. So what you should really use is the embed function here and it does embed the whole video on your timeline so it'll work online. Now if you'll notice when I've clicked this the continue option has been greyed out so I can't go any further and the reason behind this is is my video is a .mov format and it will only accept FLV formats. So I need to find a way to convert my video from .mov to .flv. And there are a number of ways to do this. And I've done it before with Adobe Premiere, and you can do it with a bunch of other programs. But the program I recommend to use is Adobe Media Encoder. And this is a handy little program to use, and it comes with the Creative Suite. And it allows you to queue up a number of files and then convert them to different formats. So I'm going to click add and then add in the file I want and then basically you can change the preset and it gives you a layout very similar in fact it's pretty much exactly the same as the Premiere layout when you export so if you've ever used Premiere before you'll be very familiar with this so up here you have the format and notice how it says FLV which is what we want but it also says F4V you should still click this option and you can change it to make sure it's an FLV a little bit later. So this is the main one you want. So it's got a bunch of presets. Now you can press custom, but I would recommend using FLV dash either match source attributes high quality or the one below medium quality. I'm going to choose high quality because I want quite a high conversion render. Okay, so then you have the standard stuff like the output name. I'm just going to keep this the same. And now here is quite an important bit. So you do have the option to convert the audio as well. Now, I would recommend not doing this, so I'm going to click it off. And the reason behind this is if you export the audio, it will be converted at lower quality, so it won't be as nice when you convert the video. And also another reason is that it might go out of sync when you've converted it. So I'd always recommend just exporting the video and then putting the audio track on later in Flash. All right, cool. So then you get the standard stuff down here. You've got filters, which basically allows you to put a Gaussian blur over the whole video. I've never used this function before, but it's there. And then you've got format. So like before I was saying, it needs to differentiate between if you're using an FLV or an F4V. It will be FLV by default because that's what we've chosen in the preset. So just make sure it's FLV. And the video is the most important function to change. So like in most video programs, you have the standard resolution you can change and then the quality. Now you can resize the video, but there is one problem with this. If you lower the resolution, it will cause some really bad anti-aliasing problems and it will decrease the overall video quality. So I would recommend not resizing the video with this program. Instead, you should resize the video in Adobe Premiere and you can also export from Adobe Premiere as .flv. So I'd recommend using that rather than this program. Okay, so you can also edit the frame rate, but it's got the same as source as the default, so that's brilliant. 
and I recommend clicking this option render at maximum depth and there is a little bit of technical stuff like the amount of passes I usually choose two passes because it does generally increase the quality and you can change the bit rate and most of these uh, you can just change them to max which will generally give you higher quality but it does have their dis disadvantages as well but if you're unsure about these you can hover over them and it'll give you a short description on all of them so it will help you along the way but for the moment I'm just going to leave these at default alright brilliant so I'm then just going to change the quality to best and I usually have this turned on use maximum render quality alright brilliant so I'm not doing audio so I don't have to change anything there and I'm just gonna go and click OK so it's in the queue right now and it will automatically start encoding it in two minutes but I'm just gonna start doing it now by pressing this start queue alright and there we go it gives you a little thumbnail which updates live about the process of it being encoding and it will have two passes so it will go through it twice but it's going to take about a minute and a half, so I'm just going to pause this now and come back when it's done. Alright, so the video is just about done. I'll just wait for the last couple of seconds. Alright, brilliant, so it's giving me a little tick there as well. Alright, so I'm just going to exit out of this, and now all I need to do is just go File, Import, and then choose my new .flv video, there it is, and then just open, and then I can go on embed, and it will give me the option to continue, which is great, and that means it is the right file format, and it will give you a little warning here, and it's just talking about what I was mentioning before, about if you convert video with audio, it is likely to go out of sync, especially if it is a long video. So, yet again, I would recommend to import the audio track separately to the video. Alright, continue. So it just gives you a few more options to change here. You can change the symbol type. I usually just keep it at default. And then what you can do is you can click on this and it will expand the timeline frames automatically to the exact amount of frames which the video is. So that's very handy so I usually always keep that on. And then I'm just going to click off this because there's no audio on the video anyway. Alright, and this just confirms what you've just pressed. So I'm going to go on finish. And then I'm just going to open up my library and drag in my video. So like I mentioned before, it's going to say that it's going to add 821 frames automatically. So I'm going to press yes, I want it to do that. And there we go, it's added in with all those frames on it, which is the exact amount of frames the video is. And then I'm just going to click this and align it to the center of the stage. All right, let's check it out. So as you can see, the video quality is decent and it doesn't seem to be dropping any frames, so it's quite a smooth conversion. All right, so if I want to increase the video quality of the conversion, I can go back to the Adobe Media Encoder and I could increase stuff like the bit rate, but there is a warning to that and it will heavily increase the video size so if you want to then submit your Shockwave file to a website, they might have a max capacity for your file. So just keep that in mind. All right, so now all I have to do is import my audio and my video will be finished. All right, so that concludes the tutorial about how to import videos into Flash. I hope you found it useful. And as always, if you want to see more videos like this in the future, please subscribe. Also, if you have an idea about a tutorial you want me to do, just leave it in the comment section below or send me a message on YouTube and I'll get back to you. Thanks.